Three, two, one. We're live. I know. This is 2OF Entertainment. By the way, David is doing all of this while he's sick in COVID, so all of these wow. new graphics are being done Wow! all the shows. Fantastic. You know what? That is getting increasingly Star Trek-like, isn't it? Yes. It's like, it's it's yeah. Yeah. Star Trek. Yeah. So I have, I'm going to send David the picture of me sitting on the bridge of the Enterprise in the captain's chair. Oh, right. you know, that's going to be the new thumbnail that's, for the show. That's, that's what he's got to use now. That's what he's got to yeah. use. because that's, that's yeah, he'll, He will use that. We will make sure. But David's Live home. Long prosper, everyone. Live long yes, and prosper. Dave, David is home um, with COVID. And oh, as no. we talked about before the show, he, he I don't know if he's dead or not dead, but I told him if he's going to die, he has to do a wow. live show with us. Wow. Well, you got to do it for the team because the ratings will be huge. So I've said, listen, you're if you're going to die. From Beyond the Dead? Beyond the, no, no. Right as you're dying, you come on. And you're like, oh, 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 as you're dying. And, you, and you die. Because, you you're know, the, so, silver pl- the silver plaque we got for the 100,000 views, so, I said so, that to him. So can you, can you and him reenact that then? Let me see. Let me do a solo. <laughs> yes, we can be an act that. We can do that. For you. I, David, David will be, I have been and always shall be your friend. You know, that's there you go. Friend. Yes. And we'll do that live. So, but if he's not going to die, why, why waste it? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to do that. But, you know, what, die? For ratings, yeah. Oh, well, excuse kinda... me. This is America. Yeah. And as and as Mr. Woods and I were speaking on his show, which will air Sunday, um, you can do anything you want and be anybody you want. Mm. I rest my case. Mm. Anyway, uh, so today, before we discuss the riots in London, oh my, very important. Uh, right, which is why Mr. Woods is here. We have a very important announcement. Um, no, not because you have a Woody. You're here. Um, the the important announcement is that Brown Car Guy has released his second book. Um, and it comes out today, which there, dun, 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 here we'll get a close up of his book. Um, and I'm sure that my copy, and once he asks what for my address again, well, there you go, will be on its way. Um, it's available on Amazon, wherever. Next time we see Brown Car Guy, we'll run his full commercial. David's, as I said, sick, so that's not happening. And this time, I've heard there's possibly mention of uh, the two old farts in there and a forward apparently not from the look on your face well it's been a great show we've got to go goodbye uh, get ready <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no idea where you got that idea but look actually yeah. There, yeah. there is kind of dedication but it's a dedication that sort of encompasses your spirit and the spirit wow. of everybody wow. out there you, you are know. just sucking up bad today aren't you <laughs> i mean so before i get into that i mean yeah it's, it's actually this is my second book and yes. it's not a follow-on to the first one it's completely different this is actually a compilation of 13 stories okay. which are written over the space of nearly two decades actually so sure. there's a lot of old ones that i've reworked and renewed and updated and put in there and there's probably two or three brand new ones that i've also mm-hmm. added in there and um there isn't a common theme but if you push me to it i would say it's like automotive action meets science fiction with a lot of um oh, philosophy Tesla. thrown in as well <laughs> yeah i'll talk about that <laughs> but uh so there's different different stories i mean we, you know there is a uh, there's 13 stories in all and they range from things like you know people falling in love with cars after cars have been banned there's invasions that are happening in dubai um there is a, a holiday resort on mars so there's lots of different things and also what does the future uh, uh look like for us with ai taking over so all of these sort of things nice. have been tackled in this book and you talked about um a dedication well i you know there wasn't because these bo- these stories are quite old yeah. but what i wrote at the beginning of this book is this is for those who love to dream to imagine possibilities in alternate realities to venture where challenge and re- fear reside to tackle uncertainties and explore opportunities not yet tangible it's for those who can fathom the future and ponder the past and for those with restless minds that wonder the peaks and troughs of the foretold and the untold. In the real world, society dictates our thoughts and actions. In our minds, we are free to roam the outer limits of reality 
and peer over the edge into the abyss of amazement. To the dream weavers and storytellers, this is dedicated to you. If you wish to be bewildered and bewitched simultaneously, read on. If it wasn't for the two old farts making noises, none of my books would be written. Okay, good. I like the way that's in there. So, <laughs> footnote, footnote. <laughs> oh, yeah, hello. For the maybe the third book will get mentioned. Uh, <laughs> for, congratulations on you'll, reading. You'll, you'll have to write the forward for the third book. How's that? I I will write the forward. Um, it'll only be available in one country. And and he was only joking about Dubai. By the way, everybody, because we go there a lot. I don't want to piss off the royal family. You know what I'm saying? Um, so. the, the the story about Dubai is it's like if you think in a weird kind of way, it's like Independence Day meets Gulliver's Travels. All right. Then. <laughs> now, for most for the most of the pe- for most of the people listening, Gulliver's Travel was a book. You'll yes. have to actually read yes. to understand. You might, you might have with to an ass. Read, read, yes. read. Read something, yeah. There you go, if you want to read. Well, while we have um, our our special guest today, Rob Vega um, from Vaguely True. That's you, sir. Yes. Um, You wanted to talk about the London riots. So I figured who better than a gentleman from South Africa who on his show, we were just talking about my favorite charity, a halfway house for girls that don't go all the way. Um, And we're taking donations. It's true. It's a a real charity. We started it uh, yesterday. Um, And so we figured we'd talk about the riots because I'm then thinking that's what they're rioting about. Or it could be something different. I don't know. Can (laughs) I clarify something? Please. Uh, Yes, I'm from here now, but that's my, that's my city of birth. That's my birth land. So just in case people go, why is he on the show talking about London? Because that's where I was born, geezer. Bloody, bloody foreigners all the time. These bloody foreigners come over there. Exactly. What's he know anyway? Eh? Right? Apples and pears. Apples and pears. Go back home. You know, that's bloody South African. God. Mm. Uh, so tell us, gentlemen. Vicky and I. Vicky's going to sit there and look pretty, and so am I. And you guys tell us about the riots in London, and we'll jump in. I know Vicky did research for it, so she's ready to go. So I did, I did, I did. Can I stir the pot? Can I stir the pot? Go I stir the pot. I want to raise it. Okay. I will show the part. Now I'm going to summarize the whole thing in one word. There we go. Those two, two words. words. <laughs> Un, unbridled ignorance. Okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. He's done. Thank you. That's it. That's what, That's what I see. I see. I, I unbridled it's... ignorance. That's what I, think, I see. I think to be fair for people that aren't aware of, of world events, um, right. <laughs> you should probably, probably give some kind of a summary. Yeah, probably. Happened. Just a top headline sort of thing. Especially the people but, at the riots. No, well, before we get into the riots, this all happened because of a very tragic incident that happened in Southport here in the UK, yeah. where a, a young teenager who is, um, as, as far as I know, he's, he, he had some issues, he had some mental issues as well or something, and he went into a school where they were teaching little girls how to, it was a summer school, a summer activity, how to, how to dance like Taylor Swift. And he went in there and he just went on a killing spree and, and very sadly, very tragically, he killed three uh, gorgeous little girls um, and injured quite a lot of other people and some very brave teachers got injured who, who had stepped in to try and, and stop him from doing that. Now, because this guy that did this, he was caught, obviously. Now, because he was under 18, the trouble was that in the UK, he's not allowed to be named or at that point, he was not allowed to be named. And there were some nefarious types online they decided to put it out there that it was actually a Muslim that had done this. You know, there was a Muslim immigrant that had arrived on a boat, um, an asylum seeker who had actually done that. And in fact, of course, later on, it turned out that none of that was actually true. He was a British born, uh, he was a British subject, British born. He, his parents had emigrated here from uh, Rwanda, but you know, he, as far as he was concerned, he was British. So it, then this basically, you know, lit the touch paper and started off a series of utterly terrifying, disappointing and disheartening riots that have been going on Mm. for the last nearly week or so. Um, Culminating in yesterday was meant to be sort of uh, almost a D-Day for the far right, um, but which didn't actually um, come to pass. So so that's the the sort of very quick summary of of what's actually happened. And, And I'm sure that Roald is dying to explain the implications of, of this and how, how it's actually come about. <laughs> well, according to him, ignorance. I, I well, think you did a, I think you did a sterling job. And I, I, I yeah. just think the whole thing is just completely tragic. And, yeah. and what has happened is uh, just to, or I will drill down a bit on that. There is obviously a, a massive far right movement in the UK. 
who have used this incident and and directed uh, directed it in uh, what's that word you use nefarious ways um, because the kid that that did this as you said I mean he I don't know whether he's Muslim or not I mean it's utterly irrelevant uh, and he and he certainly is British born and the whole thing got twisted and it's almost like somebody said what are people scared of let's give them a target boom and they just lit a match and and it just carried on and no matter how how many people try to tell these protesters or rioters or whatever you want to call them vigilantes uh, that what they thought wasn't true the more they thought it was true and they just got inflamed incensed felt oppressed and and went crazy now to in, in, in to try and keep things calm one is not saying okay we're not we're not dismissing your concerns whatever they might be but this is the wrong shop you're in the wrong place for those concerns so that's really that's really what happened but they it, it, it just it was like a tsunami of hate just got unleashed right. and yeah. and facts, yeah. facts just went out the window okay, and, yeah. and a very ugly side uh, of society uh, crept in and, and quite frankly okay. today today august the 7th or 8th or whatever it is i'm rather embarrassed to be a british uh, citizen I, you, shouldn't, I you, shouldn't be, you shouldn't be rolled and i'll tell you why i'll come to that in a minute but just going yeah. back a little bit um it, it, it was very disturbing i mean like you said whether it's muslim or not i mean in fact even before his name was revealed, and his name was subsequent, a judge had decided that his name would be revealed because of the exceptional circumstances. But even before that, police had actually said that he had no collection, connection to Islam. He was not a Muslim, he had no connection to Islam. But regardless, mm -hmm. even if it had been a Muslim, I mean, right now, today, I was watching the news, and thank God, thank God, uh, it's just been averted, but there was a young guy, a radicalized young Muslim in, what is it, Norway, I think, was about to attack a Taylor Swift concert. Yes, oh, Austria. yes. Oh, was, it, was in, that was in, it was in Austria. Austria. Yeah, two of them, Austria. two guys. Yeah. And, and, yeah. The, and the thing is, it's like, you know, okay, whether you like Taylor Swift or not, that's regardless. Right. If you don't like a song, don't listen to them. But that's extreme action. Now, the trouble is that he would he was a muslim and he was doing it in the name of islam and personally i have a major issue with that because that's got nothing to do with islam and one thing that i would like to just take a moment to clarify when people like that do things like that they are doing everything possible against every concept of islam because if you take two aspects of what he's doing one aspect is that he was actually planning to commit suicide so he was planning to blow himself up so he was right. suicide is expressly forbidden in Islam, completely and utterly. You cannot commit suicide. It is expressly and totally forbidden. That's one. So it's extraordinary that we have the most number of suicide bombers in the world in history, though suicide is actually forbidden. Secondly, you can never attack innocence. You can never, and of course, Taylor Swift concert, young children, young people going there to have a good time. You cannot, attack, you can only, it can only be in a combat scenario where the pre, the pre uh, terms of a war scenario have already been agreed. That's how you conduct battle. So the things that these terrorists do are actually completely contrary to Islam. So anyway, having said that, even if it had been a Muslim, it's completely unfair to, to paint everybody in that picture. As a lot of people have said here, you've had people here, you've had that, what's that Lucy woman that killed how many babies recently? You've had that Dr. Harold Shipman that killed how many patients? None yeah. of those people were brown. None of those people were Muslims. You had, right now you've got Britain's top news presenter, Hugh Edwards, turns out he was making child porn. <laughs> You know what I mean? And he's yeah. not Muslim and he's not brown. So, I mean, you cannot paint an entire race or entire culture with one brush. Now, going, and I'm on a bit of a rant. I'm going to keep going. So forgive me for this. Go, go. Going, go, going back to what then subsequently happened, as Roald very accurately described, where these people then picked up this torch and decided to go on this craziness. Now, there are underlying issues. And they are, actually, they have, um, you know, substantial uh, and, and I would say fair issues, fair concerns about the level of illegal, and I say illegal, immigration that is happening in the UK. And, you know, absolutely every country has a right to police its borders and to decide who and who not is allowed into the country. I lived in the Middle East, and if you weren't allowed in that country, if you weren't supposed to be there, they'd turn you around in the airport and put you on the next plane out straight away. That's how it would work. There's a big failing on the part of the government here is that they haven't processed these things. What they do is they just take immigrants and they put them into hotels for a year before deciding what to do with them. They need to speed that up, and that might address the concerns of some of these people. But having said that, there's no there's no addressing the concerns of racism and Islamophobic Islamophobic uh, people. Now, for me personally, this has been 
an extremely disturbing, mentally and emotionally disturbing time because I grew up, I'm in London, I was born in London, and I grew up in London in what I call the golden era of racism, which is the 70s. You know, in the 70s, you had the National Front. There wasn't a day, there wasn't a day, I kid you not, where I wouldn't experience some kind of racist abuse, whether it was scrawled on a wall, whether I was shouted at, whether something was thrown at me, or whether I was physically attacked, or whether, mm -hmm. And this did happen. We were attacked at home and somebody tried to break our door down and stuff like that. So when you think about all these things and you think about the trauma that you go through as a child growing up and you experience these things. And I, I was saying to a friend recently, and it was just yesterday I was having this conversation. I was being completely honest with him and I'm going to be honest with you guys, that this is something that personally traumatized me quite a lot as a child. And I subsequently realized that it held me back. It actually held me back in many, many ways in terms of my self-confidence and self-esteem and etc cetera, etc cetera. and you know and of course you know having done everything that i've done you guys know who i am and what i do and the content creation i stand you know uh, do live shows and stuff like that i've overcome all of that but i kid you not a lot of those emotions started to flood back over the course of these last few days and just to wrap this up and that's that's something that i've had to struggle with personally but just to wrap this up and to tell ronald rolled why he shouldn't be ashamed of of who he is what happened yesterday in the uk is the most extraordinary thing because there were rumors all over the internet that the far right had planned up to 100 protests and even the locations and addresses had been leaked and that was going to happen yesterday evening we were so concerned my kids are working in a, in a school over the summer normally they just walk their walk back i said i'm coming to pick you up because i will pick you up because i'm afraid of what's going on you know and even because it was even just down the road from here it's all over the uk but even harrow which is just down the road from here so mm -hmm. What we were all anticipating what is going to happen yesterday evening. What really happened shows the beauty of the real British people. People came out in their tens of thousands and said no to racism. They said no to the far right. And they said, this is not what we're about. This is not what the UK is about. This does not represent us. And there was such a beautiful, beautiful demonstration of unity and, and, and people coming together and just saying no. This, we're not going to let this happen. So these sort of things, I have to say, it, it's it's a it's a roller coaster of a ride because you go down and you think, well, we're seeing the worst of humanity, and then the next day you see the best of humanity. Where does that leave us as a race? I don't know. Discuss. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just say this: the, everything. It, this is just shameful, just in general. But what I found over the years, and it started way back in Miami in the eighties. Um, when a, a black gentleman was killed by the Miami-Dade Police Department um, and the guys were acquitted and they started to riot. And then it became the L.A. one, um, you know, and then it became this one. It became the one in Minnesota a few years ago here. And it seems that because the politicians don't listen, people are like, you don't want to listen. Hey, we'll help you listen. So what we're going to do is we'll burn the city. We'll do riots. We'll do this. We'll do that. Hey, Matt, and all of a sudden, then all of a sudden, people are like well, we're listening, and then to the UK's congratulations, where people came out and said, "You know, we've had enough of this crap. Let's just we're going to have a kumbaya on a national level." In America, we don't have that for some reason. Like we have riots, and people are like, "Oh, that's terrible because we're so big." It's like, "Oh, that's in LA. Oh, it's okay," but we don't have like a big kumbaya. Now I know in Minnesota they did. Um, the whole community came out, and they were like, "Enough." Like enough is enough. So kudos to them for doing that. But yeah, that it seems like because politicians don't listen, people are like, you know what? Screw you. We'll help you listen. The part about someone being black, brown, blue, purple, green, or whatever, we've got to get over this. And everybody's just a human being. And we've discussed this as well. That's the worst part of it is because when a white person goes on a rampage like this, eh, there's not a lot of rioting. You know what I mean? Anything else? No. Yeah. But I'm can I go ahead. Mm. Yeah. I was going to say what 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 you said earlier though is when when you have a, a white fella doing that like that kid yeah. in El Paso who went into that supermarket with a gun and decided yeah. all Mexicans had to die and the yeah. chap up in Buffalo New York who did whatever right okay what we don't do and this is this is as you said we don't suddenly list his religion his background right. all of that he's just an idiot and that's yeah. what this kid I'm not saying this kid in the UK was an idiot but he clearly had some problems but to link him to an right. entire religion and community is it's just there's no logic to it it doesn't make sense i mean uh 
I'm, this is a bit of a kumbaya thing I'm going to tell you. The, the chap that I go to to have my hair cut, whatever, is the Muslim fella. I'm obviously not. And we have we have lovely chats. Right. And and I've always, in, in a very narcissistic way, I'll admit this, I've always prided myself. Like, oh, I'm an English fellow and you're not. You know, that's not how we are. And we're able to have dialogue. And then I crack on the TV and I see this crap going on in the UK. And I go, seriously, I thought we were past this crap. I know there's historical issues. But the thing that I've always been almost proud of in the UK, and and, and Raz, I, I can't I can't imagine what you've gone through. But but I've always I've always looked down, and, and this Steve, this is true. I've always thought in America, the, the black community is always this like separate thing, African American. Even the accents are different, and 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 you have like black entertainment television. I mean, that's bullshit in the UK. You, I mean, to 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 label Idris Elba a black man is ridiculous. He's an Englishman. You wouldn't call him an African Brit, for example. It's just ludicrous. You, you would just sound like an idiot saying that. Yeah. Yet across the pond, you have an entire community of people that are separated. They, they, their label is different. And there's this division. And I've always thought, well, you know, in England, we don't have that crap. And, you know, Idris Alba and, you know, whatever, Lenny Henry. And I've genuinely felt that. I thought, why even bring it up? Who cares what, how much melanin they've got? Genuinely, that's, I thought we were past that. And then things like Brexit happen and things like the riots happen. And I go, who are all these people? Take away their British passports now. Piss off, really. Because the, the country has done all kinds of stupid things. The UK has colonized. It's done unimaginable things. I mean, don't even get me started on the whole, the Indian situation, what they did there. And, you know, and that's just one can thing. I, but, but they, you'd think that they are the daughters and sons of people who did this crap. Can we just learn for the love of God? Sorry. You know, you know, one thing is that a friend of mine came over on holiday recently and he said, I want to go to visit the Imperial War Museum, you know, uh, yeah. so you can see where yeah. Winston Churchill was there and where they, where they conducted the war and everything like that. And we were down there and we were looking at some of the exhibits and stuff that they had there. And there was some propaganda about Britain and India and stuff like that. And, uh, and I was saying to my friend, I said, yeah, you know, because Winston Churchill was responsible for, you know, I think about a million deaths because of, you know, starvation because the food was taken away. And then one of the guides who was standing there one of the actual guides from the museum, he came along and he piped up. He said, no, actually it was three million. By the way, you know, we're going to look at, not to get technical, but uh, add a couple more people. Yeah. But to be yeah. fair to him, he was quite, you know, he was quite open about it. He was like, yeah, it, you, Winston Churchill, hero to some, villain to others. But anyway, yeah. the point being, and the thing is, you touched on it there, Roald, is that you said Brexit. And, and I have to say that I did see a turning point at Brexit. Now, regardless of what you think about Brexit and whether you think it was a good idea or whether the econo economics of it and stuff like that, for me, it sucks every time I go to Europe because now I have to stand in the long queue. That sucks. But aside from that, the real issue that I found with Brexit was this idea of people going, we voted leave. And then somehow they got it in their heads that leave means you leave. I'm like, no, right. no, you haven't understood this. Oh, You're right. Leaving. You're the ones that are leaving the European com com community. You're leaving. Not you're not. You can't tell us to leave. And right. and the thing who's us? Us, as in brown and black people. Oh, for the what really brought it home to me was and I was in Europe at the time. I was actually in Dubai. And but, but you're a Londoner. I was, in, I was living in Dubai. Yeah, I yeah but you're a Londoner. Why would why would people ask you to leave? It doesn't matter because this, this he's born in think. London. I, I said, why, would, why would I ask him? But you know, okay. but, and, and the thing that really brought it home to me during that Brexit era, and what I then, because I was in Dubai, so I was a bit removed from everything, yeah. and what I really started to understand what Brexit was about. A friend of mine from here, a friend from school, also brown, and he called right. me up and he says, Shazat, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say this word on your you channel. You can say anything you want. We don't care. So he called me up and he said, Shazad, it's the first time in 20 years that somebody just called me a Paki. And I was like, whoa, that just happened? He said, yeah, that just happened. I'm like, wow. wow, wow. And at that point, I was like, oh, my God. And it's like you said, Roald, it's like, you know, we always get to this point where we think, oh, we, 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 it's like, you know, we, I live in the world of Star Trek. I'm like, we've evolved. Yeah. We've gone. Yeah. Through. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stuart, you know, live long, oh. infinite diversity and infinite combinations. We've understood. And then it turns out that if you just scratch the surface a little bit, no, it it's is still there. Happen. We haven't. It's still there. And that that's the tragedy of it. Now, for somebody like me, is like, um, 
when I, because with all of those experiences that I went through when I was younger, it made me, in a sense, I don't want to say deeply suspicious of of everybody, but it made me slightly cautious about yeah. it. Right? Because then Obviously. you don't know what somebody's thinking, right? right? And then all of a sudden now I see, and I see people now that are on my Facebook group. I saw somebody that I thought was a friend who posted a selfie with Tommy Robinson and said, my hero. Oh, God. Like, oh, my. I'm like, I don't know anybody anymore. Do you know what I mean? So to me, all of a sudden, this starts to erupt and it really gives you pause for thought and it really gives you concern about, you know, I mean, I go through life treating everybody the same. I go through life saying, right. you know, until you do anything bad to me, you're my buddy. It's as right. simple as that. You know, I don't care who you are. I don't care what your beliefs are. I don't care what your, your gender orientation is or anything like that. I don't care. You're good to me. I'm good to you. We can be buddies. It's as simple as that. But then all of a sudden, when this thing starts to erupt and you start to get these these thoughts in your head, which you can't help because we're all human, then you right. you, can't, you you start, you you know what happens? I start to shut myself down. And yesterday I was having a chat with somebody. I'm supposed to go to an event on Sunday and I'm really having second thoughts about it. And he was trying to get me out of it and encourage me to come. And I'm like, I don't know, I'm not feeling it, you know? So it's, it's <laughs> and, you know, and this episode, honestly, I don't know if you should even put this out there because I'm, I'm probably being too honest for my own good right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, we are going to put it out there unless you really told me not to, um, and then we'll just send it to you. But first of all, you should go to the thing on Sunday because we're going to release the show then Sunday afternoon. It's ratings. Um, it's like David dying on the air. No, um, but you really here's how I, here's what my parents and my grandparents used to say: You can't let stupid people run your life. And just because somebody is a racist and they're idiots, there's well, however many people you have in the United Kingdom, seven or eight of you. Um, let's just assume 90% of them aren't <laughs> stupid people that are racist. All right, you have 12 people. Give me a break. And you got some guy that thinks he's a queen now and with big ears. Anyway, um, so just because you have people that are stupid. You've got a whole bunch of population, apparently, that came out last night that's not stupid. You go to the event. Mm. You can't let stupidity, racism, ignorance run your life or you'll never leave your house. Hence why Vicky uh, never leaves that room. Um, but, uh, she went all the way but, to Korea. <laughs> I know. I, she, she goes to Korea to get away from all of it, right? But my <laughs> but my point is is that you you have to you have to be then the shining light that goes out there to go, you know what, F you, I'm good with this. You, you know, know what? Can I just it. can I just say this? I, I mean yeah. I and 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 this is someone who obviously I was I was born there. My Parents traveled around. I'm now here. I, I kept, when I arrived here, it was sort of the last years of apartheid, and then it was booted out. And and I will say, living in this country, living in South Africa, uh, and this, I've often thought that this country is ahead of most other countries in terms of its transformation because it had to be. It was almost used as the as the racial scapegoat of the world. We all knew the entire world was racist. But uh, but growing up, I mean, I was there at the there's a university here where the where the rubber bullets were flying. The cops used to shoot us. I was in those protests. Uh, Winnie Mandela would come and speak, and and she would get out five words, and then the bullets would start flying and would be running. And I was about seventeen then. I thought this is this is this is ludicrous. The woman just wants to speak, and that was how I sort of got started in this whole thing. I'm not going to sit here and champion myself as an anti-apartheid activist, but I was in I was in that. I witnessed this growth, but. What was what's been interesting about living in this country is uh, we've had to. Everybody has been forced to say those things they say, and they can, we've been forced in a way to come together. And the, and it's been good because the more the more it happens, the more people live together. Because that was the problem with apartheid. It wasn't. Yes, the color thing was there, and when people came together, it was like they didn't know each other. Now you've got like my son, for instance. I mean, you know, he doesn't even see it. He says yes, there are people that are, are whatever, but he doesn't. He doesn't have that 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 thing where he he puts people into boxes based on their melanin content. It's not something I did. I just didn't. He, he never had to learn that crap. And it's it's almost like people here, certainly sort of thirty and below, they go, "What is that crap?" Now I'm I'm part of a group that was in between, and I and I see these things going in the world, and I go, "For the love of God, there's so many things more important than your race or religion." And every time that everybody feels fearful or their life isn't going well or they failed at their job or they feel hard done by, boom, it's race and religion. You go, for the love of God, get new material. Seriously, grow the hell up. Get, find out the real cause for the failure in your life. It's to do with you. It's not your neighbor. It's you. Fix it or shut up. But to go and, 
to go and blame someone else. This is the crap that Hitler used to use. Let's blame the Jews. Let's blame someone else for our problems. We don't have to do anything. Let's blame someone. And this is what's going on with these riots. This, 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 this issue is, yes, they've got, as you said, they've got concerns. There's illegal immigration. It's not peculiar to the UK. I promise you, everybody's worried about their borders, their jobs, their lives, their securities. But you just got to give them a target. Oh, it's the, the Muslim people. Boom. And away you go. But you're not solving anything. You, it, it's just ludicrous. You know how stupid you look. Like you're the guy that drives like a maniac through traffic. And everybody goes, what is this idiot doing? Well, you are that guy if you're behaving like that. Everyone's looking at you going, what are you doing? What are you solving? What are you fixing? Nothing. You're just screwing yourself. Everyone thinks you're an idiot. Sorry. Rant over. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're quite right. It's the hypocrisy of these these things that is really quite. I mean, you know, you, you you know, when you think that okay, if there's somebody reasonable, let me sit down with them, let me discuss right. it, you know, and then maybe we can talk to each other. But then when you see some of these people, you're just like, I can't, I can't even talk to this person. I right. can't. I will never get. So one of the people that was filmed going, one of the typical rioters that was filmed going, they're coming over here, they're taking all our jobs, right? And the and the interviewer was like, oh, so they've taken your job. No, they would take my job. They said, are you working? No, I'm not unemployed. It's like, well, okay. And then yeah. he started asking them more questions. It turned out that he was a convicted criminal for assault. It later turned out that he was convicted criminal for assault on an underage girl. <laughs> and this is the guy that's yeah. saying, oh, these people, they're coming over here. They're killing our girls. They're doing all this. You know? And it's like, come Can on. Can I tell you a joke? Can I tell you a joke quickly? Go I got to tell you quickly because he brought it up. You brought okay. it up. The day after, so Brexit happens, the little girl goes into her dad's room. She goes, she goes, Daddy. Yes, love, what's it? So now that we voted to get rid of them. Yes, love. You're going to get a real job. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But to, but to that gentleman's point that you said, Shraza, got interviewed, um, apparently that teenager did take away his job. So, you know, I'm just saying. So, you know, I'm just, you know, we got to add a little levity here. Um, but I, listen, it goes back to what I said earlier. The politicians don't listen, so the people want to be heard. And if you're not going to listen to your public, you're going to have riots. Riots then lead to civil war, and then you sit there in your ivory tower, and you're like, what happened? Really? They're telling you what happened. And it's mostly the politicians' fault that you have, in my opinion, racism, because they don't bring a kumbaya. Like, listen, I love Barack Obama. Barack Obama's biggest mistake is he kept going on the first – he was the first black president. No, you're – a, you're the president of the United States. And I don't give a shit, pardon my French, what your color of your skin is. Now, if Miss Harris wins, I don't care that you're a female. You're the president of the United States. Full stop. We're done. Let's just get it. And, but we don't do that, right? It's got to be a gender or it's got to be a color. We need to get away from that. And we, do. we take a moment. Yeah, you do. We take a moment because, you know, it's, it's something unique. I mean, as a brown skin person myself, whether or not I agreed with Rishi Sunak's politics or whatever, or, or, or the Conservative Party or anything else, but when he became prime minister, <clears throat> I did make a video and I said, can I just take a moment to say yeah. I had never imagined in my lifetime to see right. a brown British prime minister. So can, right. and, and part of me is like, so, so that means we've evolved. So you take a moment to applaud right. these things. But then you move on. Then you're like, Correct. okay, now you've got the job. Now do right. the job, you know, because yeah. that's what you're here to do, you know, sort of thing. Right. You know, and again, when you talked earlier about, you know, is Idris Elba black or, you know, is he just an actor? I mean, he's yeah. just an actor. But also, like, yes. you know, you can also celebrate. I mean, Lenny Henry, to me, is oh. legend. Is an absolute yes. legend. And I grew up watching him and he inspired people like me. You know, he was mm -hmm. one of the pioneers. If you don't know, Lenny Henry is a, is a comedian here. He started way, way back when he was a kid and he was the pioneer of television comedy when it came to minority people in this country. There's a brilliant skit that he did in one of his shows, which just stuck in my mind till this day. And it just summed up what life was like for us at the time. There's a home, there's a home, it's a black family, and a, and a kid runs into the kitchen and goes, Mom, 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 quick, quick, there's a black man on the TV. There's a black man on the TV. This is what it was like in the 70s. Like, oh my god, right. there's a black and brown person on TV. So they all run into the living room to see who this person is on the TV, and there's Lenny Henry sitting on the TV. So he was sitting on but, the TV. But, so, that's but, but it was a great joke, and it yeah. really drove home a very, very valid point. But the point is, like, you know, I don't shy. I'm the brown car guy. I don't shy yeah. away, you know, from who we are and what our individual identities are. But I think that we can celebrate these 
because these are part of who we are. This is this, in infinite diversity and in infinite combinations. This is what makes us great because what's made Britain great? The cultural diversity of this country. Uh, immigration. This immigration. Place. Otherwise, immigration has made Britain exactly. great. Otherwise, we'd still be eating fish and chips. You know. Oh that's God. The, yeah. The food. Can you imagine? Can you imagine without? Oh, geez. The, I mean, you, you drive around the London, sucks. and and honestly, the no, the food is great, but it's got nothing to do with English folk. That's for sure. No, that's. I mean, the English food not, is the worst. I have a friend when I go. Have, he owns a football club, and we'll go to a Indian restaurant that his friend owns. And we get, as he puts it, we don't get white people Indian food. We get real Indian food. Yeah. And it's like out of this world. And then they always laugh. They go, white people hot or are hot? I'm like, yeah. in the middle. Like, I've tried their hot and I there's no way. So I'm like, but I go and I love that. But yeah, it's like New York City. It's like there's just been melting pot. But like, I've been in like Mayfair or whatever. We say, go, let's go to the pub. And you're like, okay, and you're great. What do you have? We're going to have fish and chips. I'm like, no, we're not. We're not going to have like cow balls and we're not going to have this other. No, we're not. We're going to eat real food. Like we have to go to a real restaurant and every real it's restaurant good. is not British. I've got to quickly say something. So yeah. uh, in, 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 in Kozino and province, there's a city there called Durban, which has probably got apparently the largest outside of India, Indian communities, like four, four or five million people there okay. of, of Indian um, uh, extraction. Um, and I, I spent a lot of my childhood there. So I was, um, a lot of my friends, obviously, you know, just from in terms of geography, um, guys I went to school with, um, super. In fact, uh, the two of the guys that I went to this fancy school with, there was uh, Viv Sony and Hemant Babalal. Hi, if you're watching. And uh, we used to compete for the math prize, and they were just super smart guys, very, very amazing. But one thing I did, I, I remember very distinctly, is we had this discussion about, you know, is Indian food hot and spicy and all that? And they said, yeah, they used to say to me, they said, yeah, the problem with white people is they think Indian people just basically acetylene torch their mouths. That's not, mm -hmm. that's not what spicy is. It's about being tasty. So when white folk, yeah. with all due respect, try to make Indian food, they just think, oh, I'm just going to burn the crap out of your mouth. That's actually yeah. not what it is. It's got to have right. flavor and it's got to have a, yeah. it's got to have a, a tickle. It's got to have a, it's got to have a bite. But this crap where people go, yeah, it's real Indian food. It's killing my esophagus. Right. That's mm -hmm. not Indian food. Just by the way. Right. Well, no, you're well, quite that's right. That's not, it's, that's it's, not it's, the way it is. It's supposed to enjoy it. But there's the number, spicy. One, the number one food in, in the right. UK is not fish and chips. It's chicken tikka masala. Now the funny oh. thing, about, now the funny thing about chicken tikka masala, chicken tikka masala is not actually an Indian creation. It was created in Bradford, so it was right. created here in the UK for UK taste. You know, so it's actually yeah. it's not yeah. authentic at all. But it was entirely created here. However, having said that. It's wonderful. I mean, that's a wonderful yeah. thing that there's a fusion of cultures. There's a fusion yeah. of diversity in our music, yeah. in our entertainment, in our food. And why not? This is what has enriched our lives. This is what has made things better. And like you yeah. say, Roll, the more that we live together, the more that we interact with each other, the more that we you know, spend time with each other and eat each other's foods and listen to each other's music and watch each other's movies, the better, the better it can be for all of us. You know, it's as simple yeah. as that. There's a guy here He's really big on TikTok. His name is Charles Dubara. He's a, he's a white, middle-aged uh, gentleman. And he, I don't know, he's got the gift of learning languages. He speaks every language under the sun. And, he's, and he does these wonderful videos where he's just walking around. He'll go up to like, you know, black people or Asian people, whatever. And he say, who are you? Where are you from? And then he starts speaking to them in their language. And they're like, what? You know, and, and wow. he does this thing where he understands. I've seen him, yeah. Aggressive. Yeah, you go check him out. And he's just really, and, and I'm actually in touch with him. I'm trying to do an interview with him at some point. But I, I love the fact that he does that. And the fact that he just levels everything, no matter who he's talking to, no matter what religion, no matter where he is, he just levels everything. And he goes, brother, we're, we're just all brothers. And, and, and uh, brothers and sisters, obviously, but brothers, and you, you, know, you know what I mean, in generic term. And, and I think that that's, if we, could, if we could have more of that, if we could have more of that sort of thing, well, I think the world would be a better place. Unfortunately, we didn't do it in this one, but in, in the previous show, which Steve and I did, my show, I was talking about an issue, uh, a time when I was a kid. I was probably 17, 18, and we have a thing called the Kruger National Park here, which uh, for people who don't know geography <laughs> is, I'll repeat what I said, it's Connecticut and two <laughs> Rhode Islands. That's how big it is. It's a big piece of land. Uh, it's quite extraordinary. But when I was a kid, I was there in the Kruger Park, and I met a man, I, I think he was from Singapore, uh, who couldn't speak English, which is, I still, looking back, I think, it, it didn't make sense. But anyway, he, his English was bad. My, whatever they speak in Singapore, mine was bad. And we, but we communicated 
uh, drawing little circles in the sand, and and we, we spoke about the weather, we spoke about animals, food, without even speaking the same language. And we the, the communication was was fantastic. I have no idea what his name was. He doesn't even know what my name was. But we spoke about all sorts of things using sticks and sand. So I'm saying, if you want to communicate with people, language is useful. But you don't know what you can find a way. And yeah. and we ordinary people take the politicians away. Ordinary people. Not a problem. These are the players that come in. These politicians, these these people yeah. that activate, they're a problem for me. They're Ordinary problem. people they, tend they to are, get on. I like to think that people get on. They are absolutely the problem. And what and this is why I was so heartened by what I saw yesterday was just ordinary <laughs> people coming out. Just ordinary yeah. people. And even today, Keir Starmer, the current British Prime Minister, I think he's absolutely and completely missed the trick because he was interviewed this morning about what happened yesterday. And, you know, why we, we didn't have what we were expecting, which were these awful uh, protests and riots. And he basically said, and to be fair, he said, because we speeded up the uh, the law process, we're sending people to jail. So that acted as a deterrent. Oh. And we have a lot of police presence. Now, to be fair, probably those things definitely did have a, a, an aspect on it. But what he completely missed the trick was that he what he should have said is that because the British people came out and they said no. That's what he should have said. Right. That's what a leader should say. And he didn't say that. And I was, I was like... God, you've just completely missed a trick there. That is unbelievable. He's not a leader. There's a difference. Well, that's what so, we said. These guys are yeah. not leaders. They're servants. They need to yeah. remember they serve us. They don't lead yeah. us. They, uh, well, we're saying to Steve, we we've got we we label them incorrectly. They are civil servants. They lead us. I mean, sorry, we lead them. We we yeah. hire them, and that's where it's gone wrong. And they tell us what to believe and who's the problem and what. Uh, Get rid of them. Ordinary people. Ordinary okay. people. Ordinary outside people. Of civil servants, outside of civil servants, what is going on with, for example, the Elon Musk of the world? I mean, what is he? Well, he should just shut up. He's I don't know idiot. if you've seen this. I don't, have you guys seen this? He's been posting on Twitter. Yes. Yeah. Civil yeah. War. I know. Uh, he's an idiot. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, what what is he playing at? What is going on there? That's unbelievable. So I just got a call from idiot. South Africa. Hi. Sorry. What? Yeah. South Africa just wants to apologize for Elon Musk. Right? We're just telling you now. Sorry about that. No, he's, he's an African American now because he's an American yeah. and he's from Africa. Yeah. Okay, yeah sorry. Yeah, yeah. Is he black now is as he... well? Okay, cool. <laughs> no, no. He's technically he's an African American. He's, 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 an, Africa he's an Africana. He's an he's American Africana, citizen. So right? he te he's an American. technically, technically, in theory, he is really the only African American uh, because people of color technically tell him that. you're you're just an American. You just happen to be black. So we don't say you're a black American. You call you you're not African. You were born here. No, you're not like African. for the last four hundred years, your family has been here. So if that's the case, we're all going to go back to our heritage, which is now going to be what the. Uh, you know the the test labs in in the Garden of Eden. So you're all Anunnaki's. All right, good enough. But my point is, like enough is enough. And this is the thing is like when people over here, whenever you you hear the term, and Roald will be familiar with this, when you hear the term oh. proper British, then you oh go, Oh my God, what, what what is that? What does that mean? Yeah. You know, when you look at people who live here, when you look at the so-called indigenous population, trace your roots back. You know, that Agreed. they all came from Europe. They came from Germany. The royal yeah. family is from Germany. Nigel yeah. Farage, the leader of the Reform Party, his grandfather was from, he was German immigrants. They were German immigrants. You know, so, I mean, it's like, you're also an immigrant. It doesn't make all any sense. You know? So when you, and we're like all said, immigrants. How far back are you going to go? The yeah. cheddar, I think it's a cheddar man, isn't it? That he's called, is they, when they discovered the first human that they found in the UK, which is believed to be the original person from here. I think they called it, I think it's in Cheddar Gorge, so that's why it's called the Cheddar Man. The He's cheddar black! Man. He's yeah. black! <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to be rude or anything, but if you go back, and in the British Museum, they have all the books now, you can read them online from the Sumerians or whatever. If you go back, I don't want to be rude to the white people, but pretty much the population was pretty much black. Um, yeah. we're, well, like the, we're like that. We're the ones who kind of said, hey, uh, we're just going to come but, on but now, you know? I just want to point out to you that about 10 kilometers from here is the right. cradle of humankind, which apparently we all came right. from here. All of yeah, us. Not some of us. All of us. <laughs> all of us. So we yeah. were all, we all looked more like my phone than me, uh, uh, right. whatever, a million years oh, we're ago. We're all Africans. So, hey, we're all Africans. <laughs> we're all Africans. Well, I know they did That's a study true. many years ago, and they say there's only yeah. four strands of DNA that everybody has. And depending on your DNA, will tell you if you came from, if you will, Africa or Asia or these other places. And I just laugh because I'm like, at the end of the day, 
we all pretty much came from the same spot, especially the people that believe in the fable, right? They believe the guy with the white beard, right? That guy, they're like, we all, if he created, we all got created at the same time. It's not like he said, like, we're doing white people on Monday, black people on Tuesday, Asians on Wednesday. It's, we didn't do it. Boom. We're all, so like, like I always say, we're human beings. Enough is enough with the color, the, 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 the. And, and really, we just need to rewire the planet and just get people thinking differently, which is never, unfortunately, going to happen. So <laughs> it's a land acquisition game. Everybody wants more and more and more, and they want their color to be the outstanding one. If they would want humanity to be outstanding, that would be awesome. But, you know. Having said that, having said yes. that, I get I get, I get, get the, <laughs> if, if we have a president of color, oh, mark it, have a little moment, and then get over it. Yeah. It should right. be remembered because you can't imagine, I mean, you can't imagine what who he represents and what people who looked him have gone through so that's yeah. fine but i just wish we had gone through all of this before and we can move on to yeah. the next page because it's so and and people say yeah but you haven't suffered true that's absolutely true i haven't i haven't been a victim of apartheid or racial oppression so fine i get that but i'm saying i i just wish you could go to page two where we've all right. done that we've got a, a a black woman lesbian president and we've done with that it's finished it's over we, we we're cool we don't care because we all came from that little seed down the road here and there's right. there's a comedian here i'm not going to mention his name because he gets enough as it is but he has this thing called the good racist and he said he always says you know, if we, were that, if, if we were that different, you couldn't have black guys and white women getting together and making little Chococino babies. If we were that different. <laughs> First of all. And you go, that's um, true. But that's true. I, if we were that vastly I, different, I, how do we make I, babies together? We're the same thing. We're the same freaking thing. I'm going to go. I want to talk about chocolate chino babies. That sounds like a, like a nice like, ice cream that's I can make. That's a whole other episode. Uh, yeah, that's like, whole other episode. That is hey, so silly. Go to the store and get me some Ben and Jerry's. I want that little chocolate chino thing. Like, <laughs> I want chocolate chino ice cream now. That's awesome. Vicky, but he's you know, right, though. It's true. Yeah, yes. It's true. Vicky we make very babies quiet together. I mean, show. what do you think about this, Vicky? Do you want a little chocolate chino baby? No, I'm sorry. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Was that, was that uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> Vicky's going to make sure that that's not one of the shorts for Michelle, but I will. Yeah, no, that's not happening. And yeah. if AI tries to make that happen, then um, I will shut down Hal. And it will be oh, I'm sure you will. But, that, but see, I I think this thing, we're all like different races here and religions. I mean, granted, I'm Jewish and we supposedly own the banks and entertainment and we have Jewish lasers. I mean, that one's true. Um, but it's, you know, it's fine. But we all get along. And 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 Shrasno, we do the show with Riza, and it's, it's a Jew and two Muslims doing a cigar show. And we we have we're fine. No, we make fun of each other. We have a good time with each other. It's totally so. I don't get this. This is the thing: is the, self, is the self-imposed divisions as much as the natural division of melanin and color, like you say. But there's also right. the self-imposed divisions that we have, which yeah. we go by by country or by religion or by the, whatever right. tribalism we ascribe to. You know, and the trouble with that is that that also falls down. So, okay, I'm going to relate a story. I was doing a video uh, with in Abu Dhabi. And uh, we were doing it at a service center. It was a car related thing, obviously, that we were doing. And obviously. we were filming the service manager at the service center. And he was a, an Indian guy, an Indian Hindu guy who had come over from India to come and work in Abu Dhabi. So right. and he, he in the community that he grew up in India was very much a Hindu community. And we were chatting over lunch and he got quite friendly and we were just chatting. And he was saying and he started saying, Shazad, I said, I want to tell you something. He said, when I was in India, and I was really excited to get this job in Abu Dhabi because that's like you know, change my world. It'll change my life. Yeah. I'm so excited. I come over here and they say, right, this is your job. This is your role. This is your team. You're involved. You're uh, you're supervising all of these people. And he said, and I said, I looked across. I looked at the people. I looked at the names and they were all Muslims. He said, they were all Pakistanis. They were all Muslims. And he said, I shit myself. He said that because, you know, because everything that he'd been told, that he'd been right. trained, that he'd been programmed, that he'd been the propaganda that he'd received, he was like, they're going to eat me alive. They're going to kill me. They, they hate right. me. This is, this is not going to work. You know? and, and, he's, and he said, he said, I've been here two years now. These are my brothers. We hang out with yeah. each other. We eat together. We go out together. He said, he said, my, he said, my whole worldview has completely changed because of this experience. And if I hadn't had this, I would have carried on in that blinkered view where I just right. wouldn't have understood other people. So again, these are just self-imposed things that we I agree. Fictions that, guy, we that we don't need to. The guy who, as I said before, the guy who literally, I will only go to him because he knows what he's doing. 
uh, the guy who cuts who cuts my hair is a Muslim guy, and and the, what's great about it is we we sat there and the, I'm sat there in the chair, and and we we have these long twenty minute conversations about all kinds of stuff, and it's it it just I, I will be honest, with, I, I will say that I. I didn't have any prejudices, but I didn't know much about Islam or anything like that until I sat with him, and it's been now 15 years, and we've had all kinds of conversations. And you, so you know, you know, there's a normality there which is never spoken about. It's never spoken about, and he is obviously against all the 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 whack jobs doing stuff, as you said. He he's like, oh my god, that's not what he's about. And there's so many things, so much misinformation, and he's probably one of the most decent people I know. Fact. Not because he's Muslim, he just is a decent guy. So we, we don't we don't harp on about the religious differences. We just realize we're basically the same people who have a slightly different view of what the road is to get where we're going. And 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 that's it. That's all it is. That it, it doesn't he he doesn't threaten me. I don't threaten him. It's fine. And 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 just as well because I mean he's got a he's got one of those those scalpels where he does my beard and great stuff. Razor. So great yeah, I mean he could he could you do some damage. Know. You don't want to piss him, him off. <laughs> no, you don't want to piss him off. <laughs> one, one, oh. of most, one, of uh, one of the most beautiful images that came out of uh, yesterday, were, and it's, it's on the internet, you'll find it on TikTok or whatever, mm -hmm. but they, 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 obviously the mosques were under siege, so there was a group of people that had set off, I think it was in Birmingham, if I'm not mistaken, and they set off to go towards the mosque to protect it. So they'd also, a bunch of Muslims and Asians that are walking towards a mosque because they're like, okay, we've heard they might be coming, so they're going there. As they're going there, a bunch of people come out from a pub, from a pub that is on the way, and they come out and they greet them. I mean, they're, they're hugging, they're shaking their hands, they're saying good luck, yeah. and if you need any help, we'll come. And I thought that was just so beautiful. That was so that's beautiful. Cool. That is where Britain shines. That's where that's where yeah. you see, wow, people for going to a mosque next to a pub, they all come out and they all greet each other and they all help each other. They, I mean, that's that's that shows the possibilities. That shows well, the and, possibilities. and also to be fair, you have to compliment Guinness. Because without that, that would have never happened. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. So. <laughs> yeah, we have no idea who these people are. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, later, later they're going to see. Their, that's right. Later they're going to see their pictures in the paper. Go, I hugged this guy. So I you know, it's just <laughs> it's like they don't know. So it's, yeah, we don't know yet. But now it's it. Hopefully, if if nothing more, other than you know, we we the show maybe sheds a little more light on racism because it really is all. It's what it's all about, right? And of course, your book, not that your book is racist, um, but, um, but like it's wow. really people. I think just that his book isn't racist. It's about people traveling and some well, other there, stuff. There, that, there and, is a, I mean, there is a story in there that I very deliberately okay. called The Secret Life of Muslims, you know, and I, and obviously that's designed to pique people's interest. And, yeah. and, and it, and it, and it, and, it, uh, and of course, I'm okay, so I'm gonna, I'm, I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't tell what the story is about, but I'm gonna do it in this case. That's okay. that story is about a future in which Islam has been banned. Wow. So, so that's that's what that creates. It creates a scenario okay. where the 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 the, um, the practice of the religion is completely and utterly banned. So what happens to Muslims? So, for right. example, like one of the images I, I posted up was like, you know, um, of, of a guy uh, is running towards a girl in a, in a cafe with a sandwich. And she's like, oh, my God. And and I, and I gave, gave it the caption, the halal rom-com you never knew you wanted to read, you know. Right, right, right. And the story there is basically she's a Muslim. She can't tell anyone. She's going to work. She's going about her daily business, but she's fasting. So she's right. gone out to lunch. This guy is obviously interested in her. She doesn't want to let him down at the same time. But right. at the same time, she can't eat anything. She's trying to go, what do I do? You know, so, right. you know, I don't want to put him off completely, but I can't eat, you know. So and, and so it's just a little bit of an insight to to. Yeah where that leaves people you know if you don't allow people to exercise you know their freedom of faith or their freedom of belief but at the same as long as it's not you know within the parameters of law and order obviously right. but if you don't allow that to happen that if you're oppressing people if you're subduing people then what happens is and it's the same as the truth for the for the far right as well at some point those people are going to explode you know, it's true. For, it's true for everybody. The, the more you oppress and subjugate, and we've seen it through history, and we've seen it, you know, through right. apartheid and things like that. The more you do that, at some point, that you're you're just building up the tension, and at some point, that's going to explode, and it's not going to end well for anyone. You know, that's and that's that's the more we allow these things to come out, the more we can talk about them, cooperate yeah. with each other, create an, an environment of understanding, peace, and cooperation. The better it can be for everyone. I agree, Vicky. What do you think? 
I, you know, it's, it's hard. It's, inc it, you want to be hopeful about the future, right? I mean, Shazad and I are Trekkies. So like, you know, the future is bright, right? But hey, I'm a Trekkie you think too. About, yeah, oh, <laughs> yay, mom. Um, <laughs> you think about history and how this has basically been going on since day one that we've thought, yeah. you know, and so it's been thousands of years and we're not any better. And, you know, he just brought up the whole thing about, you know, what if there was, you know, Islam was banned. Well, you know, Christianity has been banned. Like every religion has been like, you know. Well, that one's okay. You can ban Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, you know, I just did this whole thing on this this martyrs. I just read up on, you know, at my last show, right. I went to this martyrs museum in, in Seoul. And, you know, all these thousands right. of Christians were killed. So, I mean, it's like, it's, it's never ending. It doesn't seem to matter how much we learn or how better we get. It's still, there's something in the human experience in the, the, the makeup of our, you know, little alien selves that makes us want to compartmentalize people and put blame on the other, whatever that other is, to deflect personal responsibility mm -hmm. that is doesn't seem like it's ever going to change. It's there's ebbs and flows of being better and being worse, but you just look down this long road of like, it's just going to be this way forever. And, you know, how do we change that without changing who we essentially are as, as a species i don't know it's just it's lazy I think. it's lazy that's why people do it it's lazy it's it lazy easier to, to point at someone else than to take your yeah own it's just pure yeah, lazy sure. like i said at the beginning unbridled ignorance if i want to say to these people if you actually chat to all these people you think that are pressing or, 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 are, or are coming to take your jobs have a have a coffee with them sit down behave like proper men talk you go oh and you'll see what an idiot you actually are but yeah. That takes work. That takes a Being change of face on yeah. it. Is, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, just well, just know, sit down want, and have a chat for God's well, sake. Report they won't do that. It's a really interesting point when they were talking to some of these people and they were saying, "Right, so you're angry now and you feel this way now. What's going to happen tomorrow yeah. when you go to the <laughs> when you go to the clinic and your you doctor is fun? You know yeah. what you're going to do when you go to Greg's uh, cafe, which they looted for some reason. Attacking Greg's was a, was a legitimate target. But what yeah. happened when you go there and the person that's serving you is wearing a hijab? What's you know? How are you going to do that? How are you going to cope with that? You, you've had your you've, you've had your moment of craziness. Now you're going to go back to reality, yeah. and you're still into you know. I mean, you're still interacting with us. You're still interacting with all of these people. How are you going to cope with that? You know. So it, it, it is literally a case of like in the moment, they either like they lose sight of logic and common sense or it's just that they're driven by, like you say, this, this unbridled ignorance, which is fed through a steady dose of propaganda that comes through their social media feeds, unfortunately. That's terrible. It, and with the point you made earlier, which was be a man, that's that's a big ask for a lot of these people. They don't know what that means to be a man. And and I'm not I'm not excluding women for this. I'm just saying they don't the men don't know what it is to be a man anymore. You know what I mean? You know, so you know, there's a video at the moment. It's just I just saw it on Instagram. This guy, it was one of the, the rioters. He, right. he rocks up, he's covered, he's covered his head. He's, you can see yeah. he's a youngish guy. He rocks up towards these police vans, he starts hurling bricks at them, you know, he starts hurling bricks, right? right? So the police are like, right, we're, we're having him, you know, because they've been told that they can get super strict. So they have him, they put him on the ground, they think and somebody's filming live, and he goes, But I'm a child, I'm a child. I was like. Well, it's too yeah. late for that, buddy. <laughs> that's right, man. You want to you want to be you want to pretend you're a man? We're gonna treat you like a man, and that's and listen, I I kind of like the old days when when the rioters would throw bricks and the police would just shoot them dead. That stops it really quick. So why is that a problem? You can't do that anymore. And I'm listen, I'm not prejudiced. And don't, forget, I, don't forget that the police here don't have guns. You see, that's, right. well, that's not that's my fault. That's not my fault. <laughs> I give them guns. When you riot, you get shot. You don't riot anymore. And and the, and the show before the show, we were speaking and, 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 and Roll said that, you know, guns kill people, which is really wrong. It's the bullet that comes out of the gun that kills the people. Um, so I'm just saying, but if, if you do something, it's why in Dubai, they don't have crime. Because if you do something wrong, they kill you. You know, don't do something wrong. I mean, like, literally, I told you the story when we got back the first time. It's like we had, you know, the people... Um, this lady left her purse sitting there to go get food. And I'm watching it like, I don't, no one should steal this. And my buddy's like, dude, dude, no one's going to touch her purse. I mean, I'm talking, it's like a $25,000. They go, she's good. And then I realized, oh yeah, it's like the safest city in the world. And the FT just came out with um, a listing it, it happens of the that safest way cities. Too. I'm sorry? 
I, I could leave my laptop in Seoul. I could leave my $5,000 yeah. laptop in a cafe, go to the bathroom, go outside and take a call and come back in and it's still there. It's still there, just, right. But I, not I, maybe they're just more decent people. Maybe yeah, they're just no, more I decent people. It. I can leave it with you no. because and I, I imagine the same would be true in Japan and places like that. It's just a discipline of people and it's a discipline yeah. Yeah. That's instilled in them. You know, and the There's people, a collectivist society that yeah, keeps people yeah. online. It's, it's yeah. individualistic, individualistic societies that have this ego that comes out that, but that's a different, that's a different story. That's a different yeah. topic for another day, maybe. You don't see riots in Qatar and in, in UAE. You don't see riots because if they start to riot, they're going to bring out their little drone helicopters. And go, then there's no more riots. I mean, the same when they, yeah, they're not going to tolerate it. This is the, I was saying to somebody the other day, I was like, you know, I, uh, you know, I lived in the UK, I've lived in the Middle East, you know, but there's a lot to be said for benign dictatorships. Yes, yeah. there are things that you can't say, that you can't do, right. whatever. But at the same time, right. what the authorities are doing is they're still trying to create, you know, if they think that they can make things easier for people by building more roads, they're going to build them. If they yeah. think they can make things easier by building a metro system, they're just going to do it. If yeah. they think they can facilitate more people coming in by easing the visa system and stuff like that, they will just do it. But yeah. you don't have to write about it. You can just right. go and talk to somebody over a chai and a, and a, and a shisha or whatever, But and it, and it will happen. But but if you do riot, if you do steal, if you do get out of hand, then you're going to find out what it's all about. Yeah. It's as simple and, as that. And I'm, I'm okay it's with that. It's a dictatorship, you know. Yeah. But you know what? To an extent, that's okay. Because when you go to Dubai, like I told you the story, you know, one night we were out at two or three in the morning coming home from the Four Seasons after smoking cigars, and there was these three girls, and they must have had between jewelry and purses two or three million dollars on them. And I said to them, you feel safe. And they're like, we're in Dubai. That was the, it's like, we're, and I'm like, yeah, okay, even at the house, yeah. When, when I was over there, I used to, in the early days of Car Magazine, when I was there, we, there weren't any great photographers in the UAE. There's brilliant ones now, but not back right. then. I used to fly photographers from the UK. I remember one time we were out, we were doing a shoot all day, and I said, Richard, let's go for some lunch. So we pulled into the Mall of the Emirates, parked the car, and, and Richard started to take all of his equipment out of the car. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> They said, it's five grand worth of kit. I'm not going to leave it in the car. I'm like, dude, you could leave it on the roof. We can roof. go and have a nice two-hour lunch, and it will still be yeah. here. Don't worry about yeah. it. <laughs> and, he said, yeah. and he just blew That's his cool. mind. He was like, what? He was like, yes, man. So you can leave it. Put it on the dashboard. Nobody will touch it. You know. It's wow. Well, there was a funny story in the, in the local UAE paper I read a couple months ago. And somebody apparently broke into somebody's house because they were on holiday because, you know, you can notify the police you're on holiday. They come check out. So they found that they broke into the house. I think within 24 hours, they found them. Everything was returned. I'm, I don't know what happened to the people that broke into it, but like they have like one crime a year. And then they make the example out of the purple bull, and it's like, eh, they, they, have any they, more they make yeah, an example. They do make yeah. an example out of it. And I think that in itself is a deterrent. The, yeah. the level of surveillance in Dubai is at another level. I mean, we think they oh, have yes. lots or Orwellian. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's Orwellian. But that's why, like, you cannot step out of line because they will know. I and they will hunt yeah. you down. You know, it's as simple as that. If you and speed, they don't. Need... And you may think that's a bad thing, but on the right. other hand, it's the it's, you know I don't feel safer anywhere in the world than I do when I'm in Dubai. I agree so, with that, and I will tell you what's really funny. If you speed in Dubai, if the posted limit is 50 kilometers, you're allowed to go 70. If you go 71, they don't have police cars. They take a photo of your plate and they just send you the ticket. And if you don't pay your ticket, they just come get your car. You know, so it's sort of like you you can you can drive, you can do, you cross, you do, and it's the only city. You know, the little white guy and and the white guy and red guy when it says walk up. That's the only city I pay attention to that because that's the only city where they'll actually give me a ticket if I go against if it's the red guy, even if there's no cars. So I'm like, nah, I can wait. I'm good. So it's one of those. Two minutes. <laughs> uh oh, he's got to go to the loop. This is what happens when you get old. You have and you write a book <laughs> and you don't put me in it. This is what happens. You go. You have to go to the loop. So that should be your thing. So, so really, the solution is having a, a big guy with a stick managing a bunch of children. That's what it is. That's, what that's what's doing. going on. That it's a, a big guy. Stick. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was. was wow. <laughs> he's, got, he's got good flow. Have you got good flow. Oh, no, I don't know. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I thought my son had the key. He didn't have the key. So that's uh, <laughs> oh, so wait, this is your son's fault? Or we're gonna yeah. you know what happens to you? All right, bring him over. You know what happens to him now? We'll make an example. Wow. Anyway, wow. <laughs> so watch. His son is. I see his son on his uh, Instagram all the time. It's very cool. Yeah, well, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Is thank you for your time today. I'm glad you. Um, I want to say this in, in a good way. Not I'm not trying to make fun, but of course, what I say it sounds that way. I'm glad you got the vent. 
but I'm also glad for the audience they got to actually it, not so much experience it, but hear what it really is to be. And I don't see you as a brown person. I see you as my buddy. So I'm just using it for the show. But to see what a brown person really thinks when crap goes down, if you will, in the UK or anywhere. And I think for the audience, that was important. But as you know, we've known each other long enough now that to me, you're just a person and I'm good with that. So, you know, and that's it. And everybody's a person. Uh, Vicky, we're not sure about, but everybody else. Um, so, you know, <laughs> so... <laughs> but yeah, but I'm glad I'm glad the audience got to see that. And actually they get to see a side of you on Sermon from the German once a month that's not so much well, well, that we yeah, I mean to be honest, like I I probably I probably exposed myself to quite some extent. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Be very careful when you use that word. So. <laughs> that's before the bathroom break. No, that's, which I wouldn't have done on Brown Car Guy. But I think that yeah. you know, when you're discussing subjects of such importance to society and 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 and, and everyone really then yeah. if you're not 100% authentic and genuine about it, then you're basically cheating everybody and you're cheating yourself. And I don't, I don't think that's right. So, yeah, part of me is like, oh, I went a bit far, but part of me is like, no, I, I think it's important. Oh, hell no. That's okay. good. I think you have to. I agree with can you. I just, yeah, can please. I just say something in terms of the context of where I live and what this country's gone through and is going through is I, 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 find, I find when people say I don't see color ridiculous. Of course you see color. What's wrong with color? It's fine. You yeah. should. This 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 nonsense. People say oh, I'm colorblind. Black and white people are the same. They're not the same. It's fine. It's okay. But when it comes to who they are as people, well, that's a different story. But I don't want everybody the same. How boring is that? At least the food in the UK is decent. Can you imagine? Yeah. I mean, it's good. You should actually. The, the differences are good, but that's all they are. They just we just right. tall people, short people, black, brown. It's fine. You, we should well, be different. People. It's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> differences are great. They're great, yeah. but they shouldn't be used as a political weapon in any way or, or any kind of judgment of character or faith or religion or whatever or criminal intent. That It's utterly irrelevant. Anybody of any color can do stupid shit or believe right. anything. That's a fact. That's We've true. seen that. So can we just move on to the next page and get yeah. over this? I'm just saying. Except, except short people. We have, that we have a whole bias against. And the song that Randy Newman wrote, the song <laughs> Short People, was too long. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just do that because we have one person on our channel that's short. I don't want to mention any names, Rachel, um, from Social Intercourse. I don't like to mention her name. But when she waves at you, it's a microwave. I do. You know <laughs> so there you go. So, and I'm going to use that as a short. Mwah. Love you, Rachel. Anyway, um, but yeah, so I bust her. She's five foot nothing. It's great. Uh, it's, I just, he's just, got he's efficient. Steven, yeah. when she gets on a plane, my daughter is 5'2. When she okay. gets on a plane, economy or, or coach or whatever the hell, the lowest class for her is like business. Cattle. She yeah, gets cattle. stretched out. Yeah. Yeah. She's got such an advantage. You're kidding me. I have to sometimes get into business class just to feel normal. My wife, my wife's the same thing when we fly. She's like, why do you have to fly in the front of the bus? I'm like, I'm 6'2. Yeah. And then she, and you're five foot nothing. I said, of course I'm going to fly in the front of the bus. I would actually like to not, I don't know, have my knees and my chin where yeah. you can go into the cattle in the back and sit in the last row near the loo and you're sprawled out like it's the Taj Mahal. I said, so that's why. So, which is great. Yeah, you can put them in luggage. Just wrap them up, throw them on the top shelf. Go ahead. That, that's the difference between you and I. It's two inches, just by the way. Thank you very much. A lot of women have told me that. Anyway, everybody, thank you once again for the show. As always, it's I, a pleasure. I hope we're talking friend. about height here. You know, I... oh, oh, yes. That, we, we were talking about height? Okay, we were talking about height. Sorry about that. As so. usual, it has to lower the common denominator. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there it is, in the gutter. I love it. And there you go. Listen. We can only do so much seriousness because, you know, now we have to bring out the, the show. No, but thank you, all three of you. Um, well, thank you for showing up and, and doing this. Brown Car Guy, as always, love you to death. Um, thank you for doing this. Vicky, love you, as always. Um, and I get to see Vicky in about seven hours for another show, so she'll be all excited. <laughs> and it's Brown Car Guy. We'll tell everybody live long and prosperous. Um, and we'll see you next time, next month with Brown Car Guy. Don't forget to subscribe and like. You can catch us on our podcast under Two Old Farts Making Noises. Look for a Sermon on the German, or you can catch us here on YouTube, and you'll see Brown Car Guy. Um, and hold up your book before we go so everybody can see it. Then we'll do a little close-up. There we go. There's his new book dedicated to Two Old Farts Making Noises. <laughs> there you go. Do your voice again.
quantum races. There you go. We're going to have to now pay for that. Thanks a lot. Anyway, okay. so everybody, don't forget to buy the book. You can buy it on Amazon. And we'll see you all next month with Brown Car Guy. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.